Sorup here with uh, a tutorial on how I make moving parts in KSP. Uh, I use the uh, LV R1 or the 1R liquid fuel engine for the flexible parts and the landing struts for the moving parts. Uh, two things uh, determine how much bend you get out of a part. Uh, the how many uh, LVR1s you use. The first one here is two, the second one has four, and the last one has six. Also, uh, the len uh, how far along the part the landing strut is, where it pushes on the part. The farther away from the uh, turning point, the farther it bends. And I will show you now. You will need to have the parts clipping. As you can see, the first part bends the least, the second part bends farther, and the last part the farthest. This is because the last uh, landing strut is a little bit farther away uh, on the strut. But as you can see, it also helps to make it bend even farther is using a second uh, landing strut. Which exerts more force and bends it even farther, as you can see. Now there's another trick you can use. You have to look at where your last uh, landing struts pushes on the beam. Try to remember the spot, then go to the hanger and add a strut on the beam, like so. I was about here, duplicate, I make it uh, duplicate for the balance, I don't want it to fall over. Now you can put it like this, or you can put it at the angle the strut will push on it, the landing strut, like so. And let's see if I get it correct. I have a little drink. Now I'm going to push again with the first group. Now normally you can put uh, the two struts, uh, landing struts, uh, on the same beam in the same group. You don't need to push them separately. Well, I didn't do that correct. Let me do that again. Uh, you'll notice if you're doing this, this is a little bit uh, try and error until you get the right position because you can't see it. Or maybe you can if you put it like this, hmm. but it will move, so it still won't help really. Just try, go around, try a few times till you get the right position, and it will change as you bend it farther. No. Wait, I'm gonna push just the second one. That doesn't work. As you can see, it bends maybe a little bit farther, but what you can do now is, for, for instance, make a ladder with the struts. And I'll show you how. Uh, we don't need this, we'll move that. I thought I was going to need that, but I didn't. Now, if you put another one on, it should, in theory, and I'm going to leave this one off so it shows. It should push farther, it should jump, because it doesn't want to uh, clip, it wants to push on the object and not clip in it, though sometimes it will. See? And now it even bends farther. And you can do this multiple times, you can for instance uh, do this also uh, with the first one adding the same kind of struts here and removing the first one and for instance even for adding a third one though it might slip off this time you have to look at uh, that it hits the middle of the last strut but not but it also has to hit the first strut if it doesn't hit the first one it will just clip through it so 
Now we're going to look how far it goes this time. First one. Goes a little bit farther than the uh, other side with the first strut. Now we're going to put out the second one, which will push it even farther. And as you can see, you can get a pretty good bend. I managed to get it about uh, 90 degrees uh, from my starting point, which you can see on my uh, latest creation, which I'm still working on. The Arrowhead Mark III. So, so as you can see, compared to the first one, you can get a decent bend on the third one. Though you don't need really the six uh, LV one R liquid fuel engines for that. I got use normally use about three. Though this seems to help. I normally use three, and they will bend the same way. This seems to go a little bit smoother, so maybe this is better. Well, and if you let go, everything jumps back. Um, you can use, and I can, will show that also. Use the fuel lines to make the transition a little bit smoother. At, at, at least it looks like it. So if I do this. And uh, this, do a few of those. It should move back in a little bit more smooth fashion. I don't know why, it's just a tube, but hey. And hop up. Let's see what it does compared to the first time. Maybe I should left off at the other side. Let's see. Hmm, a little bit of difference. If you've got a lot of part, uh, part count, you should just leave it. Um, now I'll show another trick. Uh, if you have moving parts on your plane, uh, like this, and you don't um, lock them down with a uh, locking with a with a port or something. I'll show the uh, the arrowhead while I'm at it. Might as well. Uh, if you don't use a docking port or a what's it what's it called? I don't know. I'll see it in a moment. There it is. Uh, this is the arrowhead. You've probably seen a video of it. Maybe you haven't. I posted a few. I'm still in the uh, process of finishing it. It's coming pretty close. It needs a little time to load because it's pretty big already. Plus uh, 1200 parts. But it loads. It's also a good example that you can use it for different kinds of things. I've seen people make a crane with it. Uh, or I use it uh, for just for a moving part. Okay, As you can see I have here a, a loading ramp and a cargo door. And on them are, let's see. What's that? What's the name again? It's a um, get over here. Here, Clempertron Junior. You don't need to use a big one. Just use a small one. It's uh, the smaller they are, the lighter they are. So the less weight your plane has. But this uh, connects the um, cargo bay door to your uh, plane. In this case to the other uh, to the loading ramp this means you get a bigger opening if you use both which I will show now first I turn on the uh, landing struts the game is a bit slow with this plane but normally it goes faster and um, 
and you disconnect it, which I will show from here. Um, undock, uh, for some reason I can't get this as a toggle, which I'm very sad about, because I would use the toggle to untoggle the uh, docking clamps um, with the moving of the uh, doors, so uh, you have to use less buttons to move things. And there you go. See, it's a 19 degrees bent with uh, the moving parts being here, and there are only three. So you, you see, now I could even probably make the bend with one. Maybe I should try that the next time. And well, you see, I can do it with two. Uh, landing struts on either side first I tried it with five but once I discovered the uh, uh, abilities of the uh, struts stacking them on top of each other making a stairs for the uh, yeah, for the landing struts to jump on you can get them pretty high maybe even higher than this but the problem is it moves and soon you, as you can see here, the landing strut is almost not touching it anymore. And if it doesn't, it just does fall through. Now what you can also do is make a moving part together with the uh, advanced grappling unit. In this case I use it to grab and hold on to a orange part. And here come the moving parts. And then you can grab hold of the object that's in the cargo bay, like so. What I've learned, if you use one grappling unit, you can arm it before you move it in. But if you use multiple units, you have to first push it against the object you want to grab, and then arm them all at once, and then they will grab it, or else you will only grab one point and not the four or two points and then your uh, object will probably for if it's heavy it will fall uh, partially through the plane okay so guys i've been talking for way too long now so i'm gonna end it right here if you like this tutorial and you like the video please like and if you want to see more please subscribe and uh, yeah i will post more videos See you guys.